Welcome to NTTS Leadership. I'm Jane King. And I'm Matt Doherty. And with us today, uh, David Rojas, who is the CEO and founder of Blue Castle Ventures, and Maria Panesso, artist and lawyer. So great to have you both uh, with us here today. And let's just start with the company. Tell us what's new with Blue Castle Ventures, David. Uh, thank you for having us uh, today. Um, basically, we're getting ready our course. That will be the first product for the US because we have other products and services for non-US uh, customers. So we're pretty excited uh, because finally I'm going to be able to share um, the how I am successful with uh, trading stocks. And it's basically all about, you know, discipline, having a plan, uh, not allowing your emotions to take over. So basically that's, that's pretty important. So you're basically a teacher and a coach. Yes. What's the biggest mistake you're clients, your, your pupils, uh, your students make? Well, trying to make the big bucks right away. Like that's something that you, like I tell my students, look, don't focus on the money right away. Just try to focus in the process. Once you perfect your process, then the money will just come to you. Um, sometimes when you have a position, just the position comes to you. You're not looking for it. The more you look for it, the worse it goes. And I tell them to give value to every dollar that they earn. Even if, if you're starting, you're making cents, one dollar, ten dollars, hey, those ten dollars you didn't have in the morning. Right. Appreciate that, like the little things. And then when you least expect it, you're making a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, right? And you have to understand the markets too. Like I always say in my course, like the, the markets are a living animal and you never know what's gonna do. So you have to respect that, try to read the room. And that's part of, of, of yeah, not allowing your emotions to go wild. How do you put mechanisms in place? What mechanisms do you put in place to someone, uh, for someone to uh, protect themselves against their emotions? Rules. Rules? Just rules. Um, rules and a plan that goes to the scent. So, for example, I read the news in the morning, I see a couple of stocks that are shooting, and I read the news and I try to understand what is behind those things. And I try to read between the lines if it's a real, if it's real news or not. So to decide if I jump in, because most people just read the headlines, but they don't read the actual body of the news and just, just go for it. And then it could be just a pump and dump scheme. And most people fall for that. So you have to have a plan. And sometimes when you research a stock, maybe that day your plan doesn't work. But if you have like a, a very organized uh, log of, of your notes, mm -hmm. then two days, three days after, the plan just starts to work. So you, if you're very organized and if you really follow your, your own rules, like if you say, oh, I have to get out at 3.54, but you start hoping that it will just go up and just keeps going, keeps going, then you broke the rule, then you're gonna lose money. Mm. It's better to lose a hundred bucks than 3,000 bucks, oh, right? Yeah, for sure. And people are just hoping, hoping, and they, because they, they become what we call backholders. And it's, uh, it's annoying because you have your money parked in a company that is going nowhere, and then uh, you miss other opportunities. They say, oh, if I had the money not there, I could have taken these and it's, it looks so easy because sometimes, like I say, these trades come to you. Mm -hmm. And you're in town for an expo, right, in New York. So explain a little bit about that and what role Maria has here. So <laughs> that uh, it's a little bit connected to our business uh, in the marketplace that uh, we have the physical NFTs that we used to call, but we kind of distance from the word NFT. Um, as you've seen, like these uh, NFTs last year were like really expensive and nowadays they're worth nothing. Whereas her paintings have, the, the, the cost of their paintings have uh, grown threefold mm -hmm. in less than a year. And it's because she's getting more exposure to the point that we have an expo today here in New York. Uh, I'm not sure if she's the first Colombian artist to, <laughs> to have uh, her paintings exposed at the Rockefeller Center on Fifth. Uh, and, and we're very proud of, of her and what we have been able to accomplish together. So you want to talk a little bit about your paintings? Where do you find inspiration, Maria? Uh, I find I'm also a family lawyer. So I used to defend a lot of women. 
So my inspiration comes from that. Uh, this, I have like 11 paintings and the topic is women. I paint like empowered women and a lot of those things. My paintings are oil on canvas. That's great. Yeah. And I love her passion because it's all about passion. Just like I can talk about stocks all day, she just produces and it's like she's just there. Like it's, yes. it's great when to see her When you love work. something, I think that it's, it's easy like to... It shows. To do it, shows it to show. To it's all about love, baby. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, David and Maria for coming Thank you. Thanks. Thank you.